Please help support the channel by visiting our Amazon store, affiliate link below. Speaking of, um, of comic book movies gone awry, this is an interesting story that popped up over the weekend that I was waiting to cover. Uh, so Justice League, we're not, we're not going to get Justice League part two, right? We're not, we're, I don't think we're ever going to see the, the fight between Darkseid and the Justice League. I, I just don't think it's going to happen. Not for a while. Warner Brothers... Uh, in their mind, absolutely positive, or in my mind, I think, absolutely positively kind of screwed the pooch with how they've reacted to the DCEU. Not how they've handled it, how they've reacted to it, right? When uh, Man of Steel comes out in 2013, and in my opinion, one of the top five films of that year, I think it was amazing, such a, a wonderfully emotional experience. Yes, that's my stance on it. I know other people are going to be disagreeing with me on it, and that's fine. And then we get Batman v Superman, which the theatrical was garbage because it came down to a, uh, to an executive chopping out a half hour. Uh, the extended cut was a lot better than Justice League ends up getting cut down to two hours on the nose to fit in another another showtime per day in order to try to make more money. Uh, we don't get an extended cut on home video. People are demanding the release the Snyder cut in order to get an, a, a fundamental closing or closure of what Zack Snyder had wanted. And they kind of just seem to be moving away from all of that. Now focusing on standalone films rather than a larger persistent cohesive universe and fans just aren't really digging it. I don't think, I, I think, I think it's going to be pretty big backlash against Shazam when it comes out. It looks like fun, but I think it's going to feel the brunt of a lot of the problems that have come out of the DCEU. But now we get catch wind that apparently Zack Snyder here wanted to kill Batman in the DCEU. That's how he wanted to end Justice League Part 2, apparently. So it says here, following the disappointing commercial reception to Justice League, a sequel, which was originally scheduled to come out in 2019, was indefinitely shelved in favor of a Batman standalone movie, which may or may not star Affleck. Uh, but if Zack Snyder, and I just, I, I, I'm using an Uproxx article here and I don't quite know why at this point, because I, I there's, there's this like such a, a, a snidey little comment here. Oh, of release the Snyder cut fame. No, what do you mean of release this? Everyone knows who Zack Snyder is, who works in, who, who knows comic book movies, dude. That's such a stupid thing to say. This, this, this such a, it's such a, 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 a just a, a cut him off at the knee sort of thing. Like take away, whatever, man, the, 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 the writer here's a jerk. Um, if he had his way, Justice League 2 would have killed off the Dark Knight. When the director was asked by a fan who uploaded a photo of Superman holding Batman's lifeless body, whether this was plan whether his planned five film story arc would have ended with Bruce Wayne dying, he responded, of course. And he made the announcement on Vero, which is his preferred social media platform. It, it's like the only way you hear anything about Vero these days is, is something related to Zack Snyder. But then again, if you ever want to go and actually talk to Zack Snyder, that is kind of the place to go and do it. Because he, he, it seems like he responds there and fans have flocked there. Now, he could have created his own echo chamber. I don't quite know. But I feel like ultimately uh, Vero is where he's at. Now, it says here, the, uh, this is how it's kind of just describing the image. Uh, the image the fan is using on Vero is evocative of a moment that occurs in Grant's, Grant Morrison's final crisis event series, which deals with Darkseid's plot to upend reality through the use of anti-life equation. Uh, in the sixth issue of the Multiverse Shaking series, Darkseid apparently kills the Cape Crusader with his Omega Beam, after which Superman recovers his body and then faces off with the ruler of Apocalypse. By the end of the series, we discover that Bruce Wayne is not dead, but has in fact been sent back in time by the Omega Beams. Now, that's not to say that's what would have happened inside of this. I mean, we already know based upon the Flash kind of going back from the nightmare sequence and uh, and, and warning Batman about uh, Superman and warning him about Lois Lane being the key and what is coming and how we saw that play out in Justice League probably wouldn't end up being just that because like if you're going to do time travel at all the Flash is a person to do it right then I mean, they did want to do that with Flashpoint they did already want to touch on that we know that's not happening anymore uh, but it does make it really interesting to see what's going to happen next in regards to uh, the series and what's going to happen with uh with 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 that i have no idea to be honest with you i have no idea uh if how zach snyder's film series would have ended um but now we're just never going to get it and that's again when i criticize the dceu uh that's a big part of it right like i mean marvel at least at least with avengers infinity war and whatever avengers 4 is going to be they are in fact tying up loose ends that have been plot holes uh, left throughout the previous films. Maybe I, they said that they said that pretty much all of them are going to be tied up. 
uh, or at least discussed or touched upon. And I have no idea how true that is. We're going to have to wait and see what happens with Infinity War. But there's a level of care and love that goes into Marvel that is not present at DC. And it is not the creators, in my opinion. It's not the creators of these. People always like to attack. Attack, 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 attack. They like to attack Zack Snyder and attack uh, the directors. Uh, I would argue it has more to do with the producers over at DC Films not fundamentally being comic book executives or comic book fans. Whereas Kevin Feige has been working on Marvel movies since the first freaking X-Men. He understands it. He has a vision. He has a goal. Disney has recognized that vision. They have supported that vision. And even when there's been some, some fumbling in some respects, uh, they have still pushed forward with him because they know that the good absolutely outweighs the bad. And I feel that DC um, just come, Warners just didn't know how to handle it. They don't know how to handle franchises. Warners doesn't know how to build anything anymore without it being Harry Potter. And they just kind of let it die. They let it get uh, to this point where it's now who knows. And you know what? As far as fans go, it becomes uh, who cares? which is, uh, I think, going to be pretty pretty present when going forward, especially when looking at some of their other projects like uh, like the DCU or the DC Universe uh, and what is going on over there as well. Hey, thanks for checking out this clip from 3 Buck Theater. If you want to get the full audio version of the episode, you can find it anywhere podcasts are found. If you want to watch the video version of it, head on over to patreon.com forward slash mundane Matt and take a look at our 3 Buck Theater perk, which gets you access to the full show that airs Monday through Friday. It's a video version of it. You get to look at this face, talk about movies and, and everything else on screen. Uh, it's great stuff. It helps out. And I really appreciate the support. Remember to please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys later.